Nations attend before God's throne with solemn fear and sacred joy. Know that our God is God alone, who can create and can destroy. Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm so glad you could join me and thank you. This is morning prayer for Saturday, August the 10th. It's the 11th week after Pentecost and week five in the Psalm cycle. And the scripture for this service, Psalm 90 and 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 15 to 31. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, O God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Alleluia. Psalm 90. Alleluia, O God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, and before you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us to destruction and say, Return, O children of the earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, as a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood, in a dream. In the morning they are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows. In the evening it cuts, is cut down and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are troubled. You have set our iniquities before yourself, our secret sins in the light of your face. For we pass all our days away in your wrath, and our life is over like a sigh. The days of our years are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they be eighty, yet they are nothing but labor and sorrow, for they are soon over, and we pass away. Who knows the power of your anger? We fear the strength of your wrath, so teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O God, how long? Have mercy on your servants. O satisfy us quickly with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants, and your glory to their children. And let the favor of the Most High our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, grant success to the work of our hands. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, O God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Alleluia. The lesson is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 12, beginning at verse 15. Now the Most High struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became very ill. And David therefore pleaded with God for the child, David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. The elders of his house stood beside him, urging him to rise from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. And on the seventh day the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, while the child was still alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we tell him the child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, he perceived that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David rose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Most High God and worshipped. He then went to his own house, and when he asked, they set food before him, and he ate. And then his servants said to him, 
What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while it was alive, but when the child died, you rose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows? God may be gracious to me, and the child may live. But now that he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. And then David consoled his wife Bathsheba, and went to her and lay with her. And she bore a son, and he named him Solomon. And the Most High loved him, and sent a message by the prophet Nathan, so that he named him Jedidiah, because of the Most High. Now Joab sought, fought against Rabbah of the Ammonites, and took the royal city. Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah. Moreover, I have taken the water. Now then gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it. Or I myself will take the city and it will be called by my name. So David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah and fought against it and took it. He took the crown of Milcom from his head the weight of it was a talent of gold, and it was in, and in it was a precious stone, and it was placed on David's head. He also brought forth the spoil of the city, a very great amount. He brought out the people who were in it and set them to work with saws and iron picks and iron axes, or sent them, sent them to the brickworks. And thus he did to all the cities of the Ammonites. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Here ends the lesson. And now let us offer our prayers and petitions for the Holy Church of God, for all of our church leaders, for all clergy and ministers, and for all the people of God for unity in the church, and that our divisions may cease, that all may be one, as you and the Father are one. For peace in Jerusalem and in all the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. For a blessing on all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed of poverty, famine, and disaster. For the poor, the persecuted, for the sick, especially Carol, for those recovering from surgery, especially Mary Lynn, and for all who suffer, for refugees and prisoners, and for all who are in danger, especially Sean. For our enemies, for those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have harmed or injured. For the mercy of God community, and for the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia, for all who commended themselves to our, our prayers. For Pam, for her continued guidance and peace in her job transition. For Sarah and Stephen Michael, for William and Stephen Edward, and for all who died in the communion of your church that they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Francis and Claire and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all of our lives to Christ our God. That God who's begun this ministry may bring it to fulfillment. for the intentions of all who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Let us pray. Everlasting God, shine your favor and mercy upon us and grant us success in the works of our hands. May wisdom ever grow in our hearts to the glory of your name. Amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.